Hi, and welcome to Viewmaster Travels, where we really visit the locations from vintage Viewmaster reels and try to learn something about their history. Today it's reel 5031, the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California, from 1974. These reels cover both the Mystery House and locations around San Jose, so we'll cover both as well. San Jose is at the southern end of Silicon Valley in Northern California, and the Winchester Mystery House is probably the most famous landmark there. For this episode, I got this Rand McNally map from 1974, which is the same year the Viewmaster pictures were taken. And even on this map, the Winchester House was circled. The Winchester House is described as America's most eccentric and fascinating home. It's built like a maze. It has 160 rooms, thousands of doors and windows, secret passageways, trap doors, and all kinds of historical curiosities. It's been called the most haunted house in America and was given the name Mystery House by Harry Houdini himself. We drove over from downtown to take the one-hour tour. Here's the first Viewmaster picture. Front view of 160 room mansion. This enormous Victorian mansion was originally an eight-room farmhouse a few miles west of San Jose in what used to be the middle of a large fruit orchard. In 1884, the farm was purchased by Sarah Winchester. Mrs. Winchester had received a vast fortune from her shares in the Winchester Repeating Arms Company, which made the Winchester Rifle, after her husband William, the founder's son, had died in 1881. Legend has it that Mrs. Winchester was told by a spirit medium that vengeful spirits would plague her unless she moved out west and continuously built a house to appease the ghosts. Or, in reality, it may be that she just loved the area and enjoyed designing her new home. This gives a sense of the layout of the house. Winchester House covers six acres. Mrs. Winchester continuously built and rebuilt her house for 38 years until she died in the house in 1922. After she died, it was considered worthless and damaged and was sold to John and Mamie Brown, who started giving tours of the property in 1923, only five months after Winchester's death. Because the house was constantly being modified without any plan, it contains all kinds of interesting oddities that we hope to see on our tour. And here was the first one we were looking for. Doors of unequal height. We almost miss these doors. They're in the carriage house entrance hall, which is where our tour began, and the guide didn't actually mention them. I've still got no idea what the small door is for. This is also where the door to nowhere and stairs to nowhere are. A lot of these details really are a mystery. And what we learned about the house is that most of the architectural weirdness has no explanation. Mrs. Winchester never documented why she made changes, so any reasoning she had is mostly lost to time. In 1924, Harry Houdini visited the house to investigate its supernatural claims. Finding no answers, he dubbed it the Mystery House. The house is very much like a maze. It's claustrophobic and confusing, and you've soon got no idea where you are or which way's out. But we had a mission, and our next target was Rambling Roofline.
The tour through the house quickly passed hundreds of fascinating details. There's amazing stained glass windows, the recurring number 13, stairs that go down and right back up again, or round and round to end just above where they started. There's exotic imported wallpaper and ceilings, unfinished rooms, windows to nowhere, several elevators, trapdoors, greenhouses, and doors that lead to nothing. But eventually, we emerged in a tower with the same view of the roof line we were looking for. It was a nice moment to get our bearings. Our next goal was a little easier. Restored ballroom. The tour made its way down again to the front of the house to this ballroom. Ironically, this beautiful room was never used for a ball because it was sealed off after the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. The earthquake caused significant damage to the house, toppling some towers and causing damage that was never repaired. It temporarily trapped Mrs. Winchester in her bedroom, and from that day forward she sealed off the front 30 rooms of the house, never to visit them again. Restored Front Parlor This is another room in the front of the house that had been sealed off. These final rooms of the tour are furnished with period antiques, but not with the original furnishings. Those had been sold off long ago. There's so much more to the mystery house than the Viewmaster reel shows, like the seance room, the exotic gardens, the basement, and other buildings. But our tour was over. The house is amazing, but it only raises questions without many answers, and we had other sights to see. Rosicrucian Egyptian Museum This location was quite a surprise. Near the Mystery House is a museum that holds the largest collection of ancient Egyptian antiquities in the western United States. In fact, I found this leaflet on eBay, dating from the 50s. It describes the Mystery House, and the only other attraction on the map is the Rosicrucian Museum. Although, that seems to be because the leaflet was printed by the Rosicrucian Order. The museum was founded in 1921 by the ancient mystical order Rosicrucius, which seems to be a kind of secret society that teach ancient sacred sciences and mystical philosophies. It's housed on the grounds of the order's headquarters, all of which are designed in an ancient Egyptian style. It's a stunning surprise to turn a corner in a quiet San Jose neighborhood to find ancient Egyptian sphinxes and obelisks waiting for you. So, we bought our tickets and went inside to find... Replica of Egyptian Tomb. Inside the museum is a full-size and accurate replica of a tomb discovered at the Beni Hassan site in Middle Egypt.
And beyond that are thousands of Egyptian artifacts collected by the Rosicrucian Order, a collection that grew so big it required an entire building to hold them. The current museum opened in 1966 and contains over 4,000 original Egyptian artifacts as well as reproductions of important objects from other museums. It's an amazing and unexpected place. The next few Viewmaster slides gave us a chance to learn about and explore San Jose itself. Japanese Friendship Garden Dedicated in 1965, this Japanese garden is based on the famous Kurakuen Garden in Okayama, Japan. When we visited, though, the ponds were empty. There had been a flood in 2017, and the pond's pumps had been damaged, so the ponds had to be drained. We also couldn't reproduce the Viewmaster picture because the trees had grown so much in the last 50 years, but you can see where the picture was taken. Even waterless, it's a beautiful garden, and they hope to have the ponds refilled soon. Historic San Jose Museum of Art This art museum is right in downtown San Jose, where they were having their annual Christmas in the Park Festival. The museum was founded in 1969, about five years before the Viewmaster pictures were taken. However, the building was built in 1892 and was the original post office for the city of San Jose. Modern San Jose began in 1849, when it was declared the capital of the unorganized territory of California, and then the official first capital of the state of California in 1850. The site of the original capital is right across the street from the art museum, where all these Christmas trees now were. For the next hundred years, San Jose served the Santa Clara Valley, which was, at the time, the world's largest fruit-producing region in the world. San Jose Center for the Performing Arts. This is another building right downtown. It was built in 1972, so would have been new when the Viewmaster pictures were taken. And it's still a very popular venue for performances today. As we followed the pictures on the Viewmaster reels, we realized that the photographer had focused on facilities that were quite new at the time. These new facilities in San Jose really reflected the rapid change of the prior two decades. This began in 1939, when Stanford professor Fred Terman encouraged his students Bill Hewlett and David Packard to form a company and keep it local. This planted the technological seed in the valley, and the 50s and 60s saw unprecedented growth as our modern digital world grew. When these original pictures were taken, San Jose must have seemed like the center of astonishing economic growth on the West Coast. Why else would you include this? Grand Court, Eastridge Shopping Center. Yep, a shopping mall. Again, this had just opened in 1971 and was the largest shopping mall on the West Coast. 1.75 million square feet of shops. So I guess it deserved documenting. 
It had a novel three-level design which allowed for more shopping and was famous in architectural circles. However, it's been redesigned many times since then and doesn't look very similar today. We did discover that this large, bird-like art installation that was in the Grand Court was moved downtown and it's still there. I think that including the shopping mall on the reel shows that even 50 years ago, San Jose's skyrocketing economic growth was apparent. And today, the statistics are astonishing. San Jose now hosts thousands of tech companies. It has the second fastest growing economy in the world after Dublin, Ireland. It has the third highest GDP per capita in the world behind Zurich, Switzerland and Oslo, Sweden. But it has the most expensive housing market in the country and a population that surpassed 1 million people. I don't think Sarah Winchester in 1922 or our Viewmaster photographer 50 years later could have imagined the astonishing growth of San Jose, California today. That's it for this episode of Viewmaster Travels. Oh, one more thing. That dome in the back of some of the pictures, that's the last of a chain of domed movie theaters. It closed in 2014 and it's now a historic building. San Jose is a very appealing city. It still feels like a small town in many ways, and we enjoyed our visit immensely. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.